Last time on Game Grumps. Oh, ding dang, a little throwing a little bing bang. Good morning, students. Ah, sh oh my god, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You gotta be butt fucking kidding me. You gotta be sticking a wiener <laughs> all the way up there until you feel the the end of it. End of what? It, it feels like I just woke up in hell and I'm like, oh sh I just realized this whole time I've been in hell. Like at the, the end of the movie where it's like, no, you don't understand. You've done this a million times. <gasps> da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. And then the guy in Saw gets up and he's like, game over! <laughs> I feel like if I had designed this room with him, it would be real awkward in here right now. <laughs> oh, so very close. I think you had it. That's cruel! I think you had the right idea. It's starting to feel better, though. I, we're starting to get places. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm Grump. I'm not so Grump. And we're the Game Grumps. Thanks, bro. I love you. <laughs> All right. Hey, everybody, welcome. Mm. Uh, we're back. Okay. Yeah. It's a new day. Uh, Aaron and I are still together at his house, mm -hmm. but um, but it is a different day, and Aaron has woken up refreshed, ready to. Take on new challenges in life. Yeah, I got new challenges. We mean old challenges that were impossible. <laughs> right, impossible. <laughs> um, I gotta say, yeah, this uh, this level last night was really getting to me. I think because I was already so like worn down and exa okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. I was already so worn down and exhausted from like the levels that came before it that I just had to like throw my hands up and just be like, I can't, I can't. Yes. I, I'm abandoning this. But now I'm fresh-faced. I'm feeling fishy. Is that good? Yeah, sure, if you're a fish. Yes. Pretty I, much any other circumstance is bad. I watched an episode of, uh... Star Trek TNG last night. Uh-huh. The new generation? <laughs> Where they're, like, super, like, cut and... <laughs> Captain America beastly. <laughs> That would be amazing. I think that's what Star Trek Discovery was trying to be. Oh, uh, really? Sucked ass, apparently. <laughs> um, but, uh... You're ready to suck ass! <laughs> <laughs> that's what Star Trek's all about. Yeah. Um, oh god, this one takes a lot more concentration, so I can't even... No problem, ...talk Do about thing. what I was planning on talking about. Do your thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Alright, this one's the tricky one. Uh-huh. Gotta land right between... Fuck! <laughs> gotta land right there. And then mm. it's over. Really? That's yeah. it? Yeah. Wow. Uh, Looking good. So, Star Trek. Um, there was <laughs> we watched an episode of Star Trek that had a B plot where like the, they were like escorting these like fish monster people that were like in stasis. <laughs> B plots would get weird. <laughs> I I always thought that. And then, and and the A plot was about uh, Deanna's mom, and so who's who's like a, a Betazoid, which is like an empath. They can right. like, read minds and emotions. Mm -hmm. Um. And <laughs> And at the very end, like, the, the fish people have, like, nothing to do with anything. And at the very end of that episode, her, her mom is like... Oh, they're trying to assassinate this thing, this, these people. Uh, they, they're, like, s strapped with bombs and they're gonna blow up the entire conference. What? <laughs> and they were like, what? And the fish guys were like, no, we're not! And then they were like, take them away. And then that was it! <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> They're just these fucking ugly fish people that they had to make these fucking masks for and everything. Mm. And, and they just did nothing through the whole episode. And and then they got taken away because they were assassins or whatever. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. They, much like the Twilight Zone, Star Trek episodes are quite often... Uh, they're the classics and there are others. The assics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, I was watching a, uh, a show called Glow Up, a competition show with- of makeup artists. Oh, yeah. One of the many- one of the many Netflix shows that I was like, Ugh, I'll watch five minutes of this, see if I could kill five more minutes of my life. And, uh, <laughs> and then by the time I'm halfway through episode one, I'm in love with everyone and I'm sweating and like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But- what if he doesn't survive to the next round? <laughs> I thought you were gonna be like, and by season seven. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm still- I realized, uh-oh. I'm still in season one, but I, I do- I don't know, I guess- Much in the same way I was telling you about that glass blowing show, Blown Away. Right. Yeah, same- same principle, it's- 
the, it's exactly the same formula, just like, they, they just take oh, of course. one thing and just squish something into that structure. Um, but man, it works every time. It's, and it's very primal. Yeah, and, and like, even though you know everyone's gonna be okay, even if they get kicked off the show, it just, clearly the stress of the situation and um, how much it means to them, like, it's impossible not to feel for them. And, uh, I don't know. It, it's, uh, it's a freaking wonderful show. <laughs> I freaking loved it. You know, it's interesting you say that. Like, you know they're gonna be okay when they get off the show. There's actually a document- there's an Australian documentary about, like, the horrors of, like, the aftermath of reality shows. Oh, no. And how their lives are, like, totally ruined. No, please, don't. Yeah. I, if- alright, I'll- <laughs> Man. <laughs> Don't um actually my joy. <laughs> it's just specifically about <laughs> Australian reality shows. Oh, I don't know. So I don't, so think I don't this know. Is Australian. Well, be I mean, it's they're all like it's like Australian The Bachelor and like Australian. Well, the ba The Bachelor, like th I'm not into that stuff at all. Like I, I like the stuff where they're doing creative mm. things. Right. Um, not where they're uh, making a mockery of the institute of feelings. Right. <laughs> yeah. I I mean I've seen. Whoops. I've seen so many fucking of those, of those, uh, reality show competitions. Was it, uh, Inked? Is that what it's called? The one with the tattoos? Maybe, Ryan I don't Ashley know. On it. I haven't watched many of them. I'm just, it's just a new thing for me and I, I'm very emotional yeah. about it. <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race. They're all great. I mean, they're all, it's, it's all, it's all primal. It's very, like, I picked my favorites and now I want them to win. Because if they win, I win. <laughs> so. yeah, you know what the interesting thing, though, is? Like, and this is just the world of makeup, I guess, and, and my lack of knowledge with it. With, with the glass blowing show, I could see where the judges were coming from, you know? And uh, generally, if they liked something, I was like, I can understand that. And, um, you know, my, my opinion sort of fell in line with, with theirs. Um, with the makeup show, I really just don't understand the, the medium at all, because I'll think, wow, that's amazing, and then they're like, HATE IT! <laughs> you know, and I'm like, <laughs> what, what the heck? <gasps> Aaron! Oh yeah. Oh! Oh! Okay. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay, right, don't so get now squished. now I have to... He has to not get squished and not touch... <laughs> those. <laughs> those. Alright, we're going again. Oh! Uh, Ross? Would have been a nice moment for a little checkpoint, Charlie. <laughs> well, also, yeah, I mean, to to speak to that a little bit, um, a lot of it is just subjective. Well, no, not subjective. It's the producers, and they want like specific things to happen, so mm -hmm. they craft the show in a way. I mean, when I was on the tester, the episode that I got voted off on, I was not at all the weakest link. I was. As far as I know, we were on the winning team, because we, like, it was a timed thing, mm. and we did our time, and we did really well, and then, like, we could hear the other team competing, but we didn't see them. Um, and they were, like, taking a really long time. So am I, am I, uh, wasting my time watching a rigged show? Well, I mean, if you're getting entertained from it, then not really. Nah, I'd, I'd, I'd get more entertained from it if it was honest. But they could clearly tell that, like, they wanted me off the show. Huh. I mean, a episode one, they were framing it in such a way where I was, like, the villain. Really? Yeah, because I, w I was, the way I got on the show was through, like, a popular internet vote. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was, like, kind of, like, I was, like, making faces in the camera and stuff and, like, being real goofy. Mm -hmm. And trying to, like, ruin shots. <laughs> and I wasn't, like, participating in their little games. Well, that does sound like something they would not appreciate. <laughs> yes. So, like, even though, um, I, I excelled at the, the, it was like shooting melons at targets or something. Didn't they put bugs on your head? Yes, that was the first episode. Cool. Because when you're, when you're a QA tester, you have to test bugs. So they... That doesn't um, feel like a stretch. No, not at all. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Uh, but in on the on the melon shooting competition. I was like the first I was like the fastest person to like hit my target I was just like right away. I was like boom. All right, and then I was like all right I'm gonna go get get more ammunition for everyone um, And and like and for the people that were there I was like all right This is what you do just aim a little bit above the target and uh, pull all the way back and you're good And everyone was like all right, and then they did really well 
Um, but I got accused of like not staying behind to like teach my team how to shoot the the melons. Hmm. Even though I did, but they cut it out. Huh. So. Wow, so it's that level of, yeah. you know, manipulated, I guess, would be the word? Yes. I mean, there's tons of footage from, like, the first episode of me, like, they cut it in for me, like, looking, like, miserable or sad or whatever. Oh, but it's, like, yeah. I was just kind of tired and, like, resting my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Pretty funny stuff. Yeah, wow. Listen, man. <laughs> I just read fucking 1984. I just needed to turn my brain off for five days. <laughs> I didn't want to think this world was becoming a... A, a, a dystopian hellscape. <laughs> yeah. Just let me watch people put makeup on other people's faces for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. I mean, you know, th th that's the thing that was cool about the tattoo show that we watched. That was like, you know, we were introduced to a lot of cool tattoo artists and it was like, oh, neat. And they are, they are all really good. That, that you can't fake that. Yeah, no, I mean, the the level of talent is unbelievable. I just, like, as someone, uh... As someone with no artistic ability, and now a shaky hand, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but I got the shaky Fuck. hands. Um, no artistic ability, you're a musician. I mean, uh, visually artistic, like... I, what I'm getting at is, I watch these makeup folks, Oops. uh, just draw like, a very beautiful lip line around someone's lips, and I'm like, how? How? <laughs> how? Steady hands. Yeah. M mine, mine would look like a an earthquake happened <laughs> while I was trying to apply their makeup. It's just experience, man. Is that just what it do is? it over and over again, you get the muscle memory. I guess you're right. And I suppose stakes are sort of low, they can just wipe it off if it's bad. <laughs> That's true. They yeah, and they can frame it however they want, if they want, like, the person that they want to win to look good, then they'll just use the shots where they, like, didn't mess up? Oh, I'm just talking about, um... learning the skill of it and practicing at home on someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like... You, just, you can just wipe it off. I feel like makeup is the lowest tier of, of stress. Then haircuts, that would be pretty stressful. <laughs> and then tattoos, I'd rather die. Yeah. Yeah, tattooing is... I, I always wondered about that, because you practice on, like, pig skin, as far as I know? Yeah. You get, like, a I've, hunk I've, of pig, I've, and I've then you practice chicken, on that. I've heard chicken, but I'm not sure if that's Fuck. true. Damn. That's the one, huh? That's the one, yeah. Oof. I mean, that makes sense, too. Chicken skin's pretty similar, I guess. It's got, like, those big pores for the feathers. Oh, yeah. I, like, I don't... Man... I don't... I, it's been too long. But... Uh, a couple, since you tattooed? No, since I was living in Brooklyn, um, in that artist community that had a bunch of tattoo artists there. Oh. They used to tell me about it, and I was like, this sounds really stressful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you fuck up, you're, uh, you're screwed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why most modern tattoo artists do the thing where they, like, you know, print out the, the heat thing, and they put it on your arm, and it creates, like, a little guideline. And they just trace it. Oh, interesting. I mean, they'll dr they'll draw it themselves, but then they'll, you know, print out a thing that they can just put on your arm. Right. Um, that this, so they they just have an image to trace. Hey, man, just get it right. Like, who cares if yeah. it was freehand or not? Yeah, exactly. That's I, and and also like it was freehand. You know, it's oh the, yes. they drew it. <laughs> oh, okay. Deep breath, calm blue ocean. Mm -hmm, Here you go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Just survive. Just survive. Survive. Oh, this is okay. This is fine. Uh huh. We're good. You're my queen. Uh huh. Okay, that's the top. That's the tall one. Fuck! Fucking! Fucking wall jump bullshit! It was right there. I know. <laughs> Did I you know. see that? Yes. I'm, you didn't want to say anything. No, I didn't. <laughs> I was like, I'll just, I'll just be in agony, in silence. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. Oh, it was so close. That last one isn't tough, though. It's not as tough as the second one. Yeah, the second one is, like, um... When you were practicing off-screen before the episode started, I believe one of us said, uh, Ross needs to pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those were the exact words. That was that was you that said that. Was it? I, yeah. I, I have trouble remembering which of us said what. I usually only remember what gets said. So does the audience. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> you have no idea how many comments I've read of people and they're like, When Dan said this, and I was like, I said that. <laughs> what the hell? I, although when I Aaron do- said, I don't know how to tame my Jufro. <laughs> well, also, um, I've, I've actually f found a couple- Fuck. Oh. I found a couple comments throughout Game Grumps where people can't like- they don't know whose voice is whose. Oh, sure. I mean, until you get used to the show. Yeah. So, yeah, people will just like straight up attribute like clearly not you quotes to you or like vice versa. Yeah, well, that's just... Misinformation is the fuel that the internet truck runs on, baby. <laughs> and it's like NOS, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it runs fast. <laughs> it fucking gets out there and it's just like... <laughs> Yeah. What did the what did the social dilemma say? Like incorrect like lies and disinformation spread six times faster than true information. Oh, online. I mean, I feel like yeah, algorithmically it like because it's usually so much more exciting and yeah, titillating. Titillating. My favorite word. <laughs> big uh, big titillators. Hmm. <laughs> big fucking titillators. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy makey up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll, I'm, I'm just gonna let you do your thing, man. Yeah. This the tall one. That's good. That's good. Uh huh. Yep. Just stay all the way to the right. Mm -hmm. Stay all the way to the right. Oh, I can Ooh, just walk over that one. Nice. How about that? Yep. Don't gotta stress. Don't gotta stress. This is some flappy bird shit. Oh. Oh! Uh, yeah. Yes! Yes! Oh, please! Queen! Please yes, be queen! The please be the end. Give yes! Up. No, we will oh, not give wow. up, Ross. We finally made it <laughs> to here. Give up. Oh, no. All right. Oh, What's going Ross. on here? <laughs> this is mean. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh, no. All right, it's fine. It's fine. Give it's up. fine. This one's not so hard. <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Uh, this one's not so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude, we're doing it. We're doing it. This is easy. We're 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 all the way. Feeling good. Feeling fresh. Feeling free. Feeling funky. Ooh. 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 Wait, what? I don't know. Maybe it shot. Oh, and then you didn't even. <laughs> you, you didn't even see it, bro. You didn't even see it though. But literally. That's my favorite thing, just using literally as, like, anything. Like, not meaning literally, just like, Dude, it is literally a thousand degrees out. <laughs> it's, it's not. And, and what does guy v up mean? <laughs> Ross, that's not even a word. <laughs> Come on. Guy, guy, guy voop. Guy voop. <laughs> G-I-V up. Bonsoir, je m'appelle guy voop. <laughs> I can't do a French accent, man. Uh, me neither, really. I just try to fake it. Well, yours is better than mine. I love- I love the way it sounds. I, um... I did- <laughs> So I did, um, all the voices for Choo Choo Rocket 2. Mm hmm Um... Which is a sequel to Choo Choo Rocket, obviously. Is it? <laughs> but I did all the voices, and there's one character that's like a French chef. Uh-huh. And I was just like... You know I can't do a French accent, and... <laughs> And, uh, they were like, just, just do your best. Yeah. And I was like, alright. And I was like, <laughs> oh, Monsieur! Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? And they were just like, we are keeping that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so the fuck. I thought they were gonna say well, you're fired. So I think there's even one recording that they actually used in the game where I, like, kind of laugh at the end. Oh my god. That's awesome. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. Hey. I that can happen? Didn't even know that was a thing. I think someone jumped and hit the ground. Yeah, it was the big boy on the right. <sighs> big boy boss. Alright, maybe this oh, is yeah, a little hard. Is. Yep. It's... Everything feels manageable until it all happens at once. Right. Kind of like life. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> oh man, we got the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, you know what? I, I got that. Got like what? one, like just whatever comes your way first, and then one more thing comes your way. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. And, then, and then 
then your fucking straw has a hole in it, and you're like, I can't deal with <laughs> yeah. life! Today sucks! <laughs> oh, shit. That's fine. Yep. Meep, meep. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Uh huh. We're doing all right. We're doing fine. We're oh. doing. F f uh oh. Fuck. Wow. Good save. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Don't get cocky. Don't get cocky. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh my god. Yep. 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 Yes! Queen! Oh my god. Those last, like, turtle- Oh, oh no. there's more? Oh yeah, there's more. Oh! Just died. Oh my god! Oh, slippery ground! Oh, <laughs> Ross! That is so unfucking cool This isn't even Bowser's castle. This is like the mini castle beforehand. Oh, I did text Ross about this, and he was like, Oh yeah, that one's a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. All right. Okay. Well, it's good to know he's happy wherever he is. Yeah. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> Lording over his... his domain. Oh, per God. Oh, jeez. They can shoot out of both sides, huh? Mm. Mar marvelous. Not a fan. God, it takes so long, I too. I know, I know. Believe me, I know. Oh, God. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> That's how I feel inside. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh dude, doing mm -hmm. fucking amazing. Doing great. Doing amazing. Oh, oh, no, 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 Easy peasy. If I stick with them, nope. Never mind. Okay, well, mm -hmm. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that it's like you know in Mario One when you go up next to a, uh, a a pipe and then like the piranha plant won't come out of it. Uh. You, like you get really close to a pipe and then the piranha plant won't come out of it. Oh yes, yes, it's like of a course. thing in Mario. Yes. I was thinking that was happening here because there were some times where it just doesn't shoot any. Oh God, no. Um, I think it's just random. Cause that, that time it shot four bullets, and that's more than ever before, right? God, it's gotta be like a line of sight thing or something. Like, what, what? Oh! It that saw was you. Direct line of sight. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Did it kill your parents? <laughs> <laughs> alright, 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 alright. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, oh! Bam, 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 bam. I told you where that came from, right? What? Originally the kill your parents thing? Maybe? Yeah, I- I have- It feels very familiar to say it on Grumps, so I apologize, folks who have heard it before. Um... Uh... You know, there was this famous... Growing up in the 80s, there was this belief among parents that if you played certain albums backwards, you could hear satanic messages. Oh, and, yes. Uh, Led Zeppelin, Judas Priest, you know. Judas Priest got sued for it. Um... Saying that, uh, I mean, it was absurd. The parents said that their son had killed himself because if you played a certain Judas Priest album backwards, it would, you could hear them say the words, do it. I'm like, do it? Like, you can't do what? Yeah, and it, first of all, it doesn't mean anything specific. Secondly, like, how many things could possibly sound like do it if you listen to an entire album backwards? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like two little syllables. But anyway. I found it. I found it. Barb, I found it! Yeah, but anyway, like, that that became, like, this big thing. It was the same time, uh, they were trying to paint Dungeons and Dragons as being satanic and right. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, subliminal messages, all that. So, uh, m my friend Mike, uh, who was from the same, uh, summer program where I met, um, Jason and John, who I was telling you about. Right, um, a lot of names. Yeah, yeah, but my, my, a lot, a lot of special friends. Uh, from that summer, and, um, uh, we bought this album, I think it was Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells, or something like that, and on the back, it said, not subliminal, there was like a little disclaimer, or something like that, it just, we had no idea what it meant, but like, he put it on, it was like this real new agey, like, hold out one keyboard chord, and then like, he just screamed like, KILL YOUR PARENTS! <laughs> It was one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. 
and it has stuck with me for 25 years. That's uh, that. That's played forward, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Man, that's that's awful. <laughs> 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 oh man, I love it. Very subliminal. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. It really gets in your brain. It really gets all up in there. Yeah, the roundabout way. <laughs> not through the not through the the front door. <laughs> <laughs> you back door to the kill your parents situation. Man, man you can't just waltz in through the front door and kill your parents. <laughs> you you gotta think that shit. <laughs> you can't tell me what parents to kill. Think that shit through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why my parents? <laughs> I like them. <laughs> I don't have any particular feelings towards your parents. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's who they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's... That, that stuff is always wild to me. People who um, think that they're... Having subliminal messages spoken directly to them. I mean, it's it's they're just looking for somebody to blame, you yeah. know. It's like well, it's well, or they're just batshit. Like Charles Manson, that was his whole thing. Um, he that's why he wrote Helter Skelter, uh, or he had them write Helter Skelter in the murder scene, um, because uh, he thought the Beatles with their song Helter Skelter was they were sending him specifically subliminal messages to start a race war. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. He, uh... He really aid to see that one. <laughs> As they said. Therefore... I mean, I don't, I've never even heard the song Helter Skelter, so... Helter Skelter! Helter Skelter! Oh, it's really good. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the Beatles, right? Yeah, it's from the White Album. What if I just, like, hated the Beatles? Uh, that'd be fine. Would you argue with me? No. Like on Game Grumps if I was like, whatever, plebeian. No. I mean, they were hugely influential, that can't really be denied, but, like, as far as someone just not being into any type of music? Nah, man, that's subjective. Didn't they, like, invent the concept of, like, like a, like a boy band? Uh, well, I don't know. Obviously not intentionally, but... Yeah. Um, they certainly were an early example of it, and I also don't know if they invented it or if they were just another early purveyor of it, but, um, the, the con- the concept that verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus. Like, that song structure that almost every song uses, like, in pop, um, that- that- they- they were, like, some of the earliest purveyors of that, too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, sure, man. Rock and roll was kind of like... It, it It came from... Uh, African-American... Subcultures, Fuck. like the R&B and blues and... Um... But because of... I mean... I hate to say it, because of racism, you know? It, 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 it was the white artists that... Uh, brought it to the mainstream. Mm. Like a lot of... Uh... A lot of the early black artists, like there was a time where they couldn't get played on the radio, and then white artists would cover um, their songs, and that would get played on the radio. Oh, no shit. Like the Pat Boone cover version of Oof. certain songs. Yeah, it was. What a time. Yeah, it was fucked up. Damn, what? A, what this, that's very interesting. I had no idea that that was that was from. I thought that was just like a musical thing, like with the. I mean, the the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge. I mean, it had to come from somewhere, like, it, it's, it, for, certainly in our lives it's always been there, but, you know, you think of music in the previous century, it was Baroque, you know, and, like, Batch, Beat Oven, well, but all I the mean, classics. <laughs> when did the Beatles show up? 1960. So the 50s. No, maybe later, 1962 maybe? So when I think of, like... I think I like the Rat Pack and stuff, which I feel like had similar structure. I don't know, like Moon Dance and uh, those got like the Sinatra type stuff. I'd have to look. I'd have to sit there. Like I, I and I mean, who knows? They 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 might have just been the ones to bring it to pop music. You know, mm. like those guys were more crooners. 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 What the fuck is a crooner? Like it was just that style of singing, like the bubble, bubble. <laughs> you know, I, I, 
I can't say it with words, but... <laughs> it's like a, like a very soulful type of singing. <laughs> I want the Wikipedia art crooner to be like... Want me to the guys that sing that type of music, you know, that's like... Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah, and then they just have an MP3 of... <laughs> Some jerk like me <laughs> going <laughs> Hold on. Uh, Crooner definition. I just uh oh 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 fuck. Yes, Th that's it. A, a singer, typically a male one, who sings sentimental songs in a soft, low voice. Oh, such as. <laughs> It's very sentimental. I remember Susie and I were on our first date, and I sung to her, and it was. She was Brought the house down, man. Did she swoon? Was she a swooner for your crooner? <laughs> yeah, I was crooning and she was swooning, man. <laughs> the little, the little crooning and <laughs> Date one, baby. Yeah. You want to go out for a crooning swoon? <laughs> Take you to the malt shop. I would love that. I wish there was like a 50s malt shop around LA. There has to be. Oh, sure. I mean, you know, you got like Mel's Diner. Oh, Mel's you know, Diner is cool. That's very malt shoppy. They got I forgot their, about their that hand place. mixed. Hand, they call them like hand dipped shakes or something like that. Hmm. Which is, I, maybe I'm getting that term wrong, but whenever I see that, I'm always like, what does that mean? <laughs> the, my early days in LA, um, before, before I joined Grumps and before I really had friends out here. Yeah. <laughs> like when it was basically just me living at my uncle's house, um, I, uh, I, I would eat a lot at Mel's Diner at like 2 a.m. because. You know, when you have no friends and you're an insomniac, well done. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, oh, hold on. Sucks. This is terrible. Yeah. Don't jump to. Yes, yes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. This is good. Oh, oh God. God. You're all right. It's really as long as you don't overcorrect, you're fine. Yeah. Oh my god. Fucking dog shit, man. <laughs> that- that, uh, beetle shell moves so agonizingly slowly at the bottom. Uh, Is sorry. it possible to do, like, even shorter hops? Like, yeah. Little, little bitty baby hops? Yeah. It is. Okay. Um... We'll remember that for future reference. Yeah, go on. I'm interested in your Mel's Diner story. There really wasn't much of a story attached to it other than, like, that I would sit there by myself and try to write NSP lyrics. Um, uh, and I would enjoy a malt and, and a burger, back when I ate burgers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, uh, that's cool. That's a cool little memory. Yeah, it is. Like, I guess there's no real story attached to it, it's just like, by saying that name, you shook that very specific time loose in my head. Yeah, know? I mean, when I think of the, like, the first stuff that I did when I, fuck. When I moved here, it was like so strange. Like I'm like, oh wow, I did do that. I had like a bunch of friends I looked. At. I don't even like. I don't even have added on Facebook because it was like before I was even doing that. I think it's like wow. Yeah. Shit. There was this. There was this coffee shop also called Insomnia Cafe, which uh, stayed open till 3 a.m. and was full of people like writing scripts and stuff. And I was like, man, this is so L.A. And I would be there and. The, the lady would serve you tea, and she was really mean. <laughs> so mean for no reason. Fuck! <laughs> like, <laughs> so mean. I was like, damn, this really is L.A. <laughs> Everything about it. Wasn't well, L.A. supposed to be the chill one, and New York is supposed to be, like, the mean one? I don't know. But, like, New York, there's, like, honesty behind it, and, like, L.A., it's more, like, like, appearances. I mean, those are the, those are the stereotypes, but... My my feeling, and also I should say, I've been away from New York for nine years now. You know, it's been a long time. So, that's enough time for the complexion of a city to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like Philly, Philly's so different from when I lived there, like, 15 years ago. Right. Um, it, it seems to be less deadly now. <laughs> which I'm very happy for the residents. Very exciting. Yeah. Um... And I'm sure I've said this on the show before, because it's... It's an observation that's stuck in my head. Um... It's- it's always felt to me, like, New York is... Chaos with a layer of chill underneath. 
and LA is chill with a layer of chaos underneath. Hmm. Me meaning that, like, New York is busy and bustling and wild on the surface, and everyone's, like, trying to get somewhere. Shit. Um, but when you live there, there's a lot of people who smoke weed. <laughs> there's a lot of people who are just cool. Like, the guy at the bodega is like, hey, man, how you doing? You know? Like, w once you find your groove in New York, there's a lot of cool chillness there. Mm. Um, whereas with LA, it's very beautiful and chill on the surface. The palm trees swaying in the breeze and all that's true. But, like, um, there's also a ton of people... There's a lot of broken dreams here, you know, mm. and a lot of people who feel like their time is running out to do what they want to do artistically and what they most likely moved here for, and um, a lot of competition and a lot of j drivers that are just lunatics, and um, so it's it's kind of like the reverse of New York in a way. Hmm. But I mean, like, how do you really how do you really come up with a personality for a city? For cities like with millions upon millions of people, right? Yeah, you could you could come up with examples for almost anything. That's very true. I mean, I always like to look at the the sort of the history, you know, of like, oh, in the '40s, this was like a big car, like cars were their major thing, or like, mm -hmm. you know, this is like a coal town, or what. That's a, that's how I always feel like that informs a lot of like how it sort of grew up. And, and turned into a, a metropolis. Yeah, I believe it. Uh, L.A. was a subway town, of all things. Because <laughs> hey, hey, we've talked about it before. Those um, those pictures of the uh, what used to be the underground subway in L.A. and it's all like Ghostbusters two and molded over and it's very strange. You've yeah. seen that, right? Um, maybe. Uh, I mean, I've taken the subway in L.A. No, no, not the functional subway, like the. The extensive subway system that used to be here. No. What I've been told, and I don't know if this is perfectly accurate, but I think it is. It certainly seems to check out, is that LA was big on subways, and then um, the politicians and the gas companies, or the oil companies, I should say, got together and got the subway system shut down um, so people would have to drive their cars and use more gas. Um, and then L.A. Oh, I did know about that. Yeah, and then L.A. exploded in population, and lo and behold, there's too many cars for the roads and traffic is insane. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, there's this rotting, uh, ghost town of a, of a subway under, underground. Oh shit. Yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. I wonder if it's, like, reclaimable. Who knows? I wouldn't go down there. <laughs> it looks like it's got a bit of a disease. <laughs> That's interesting. This is your last try, Aaron, so make it count. Uh, one, two, three. That's a joke! <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> okay, next time on Game Grow. Uh, You're still my special guy, though. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, so you got that going for you. <laughs> Which is nice. You know, sometimes. <laughs> One, two! What I'm, a, you gonna I'm a big do? boy! I'm a big fuck! Hello? Hello?